Hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Namaskaram. Vanakkam. Welcome to a weekly Zoom show on this Sunday, 28th of May, 2023. This is our show number 74, and we propose a lot of more shows as we go along. Well, she has worked in the U.S. for more than two decades. She had to relocate to India on personal grounds, and she continued to work over here. She has had experience of working in both in the East and in the West. Well, how does it look working in the East as compared to working in the West? How does it, and what does it mean to us? What are the do's and don'ts? What are the steps we need to follow? What are the rules we need to follow? Well, to explain all these things, we have a guest speaker in Gita Ayer joining us from Mumbai, who will tell us exactly how it feels working in two different atmospheres in India and US. Welcome to the show, Gita Ayer. And as usual, we begin the show with a prayer followed by the guest introduction. Then after the guest speaker takes over and on her completion, we will have an open session and we all can put in our views, observations, comments, feedback, and even ask questions the guest will be more than happy to answer. And finally, we'll wrap it up with a summary and word of thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick start the show. Having a first is the prayer to be rendered by Mrs. Meenalochini Narayana Swabi. Meenalochini Mami, kindly unmute Pane to pardon go. Devi Vundan Arul Veldum Devi Vundan Arul Veldum Yen Tipinai Agatra Vendum Undayal Vendum Devi Undal Arul Vendum Yen Tipinai Agatra Vendum Undayal Vendum Devi Undal Arul Vendum Avala pera podia vendum ye madu taye. Avala pera podia vendum ye madu taye. Satri ekan partida vendum. Undaya vendum. Avala pera podia vendum ye madu taye. Satri ekan partida vendum. Undaya vendum devi undal arul vendum yen ti dini agatra vendum undaya vendum devi undal arul vendum Kamala Mori Vandin Karunai Malar Padatil Kamala Mori Vandin Karunai Malar Padatil Urendi Rula Vendum Undaya Vendum Kamala Mori Vandin Karunai Malar Padatil Urendi Rula Vendum Undaya Vendum, Devi Vundal Arul Vendum, Yen Tibini Agatra Vendum, Undaya Vendum, Devi Vundal Arul Vendum. Karunai Kadal Ni Andro. Yere and a cop, a dun, and unro, Karu, nay, cuddle me and ro. Yere and a cop, a dun, cud and unro, cut again a yard of vendum, Undaya vendum, Karu, nay, cuddle me and ro. Yere and a cop, a dun, cud and unro, cut again a yard of vendum. Undaya Vendum, Devi Bundal Arul Vendum, Yen Tibini Agatra Vendum, Undaya Vendum, 
தேவி முந்தல் அருள் வேண்டும் தேவி முந்தல் அருள் வேண்டும் Thank you, Lord Chinimami. That was a wonderful dedication of the prayer. Giving a perfect start to the show. Now you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show and get to know the experience of Gita working in India and to us. The last week we had Brinda Ganesh who spoke to us on an important topic of wisdom through stories. We narrated quite a few stories and, and, and shared a lot of wisdom with us. We grew a little more wiser. Listening to our stories. Let's have a listen to what you said last week. There is one, uh, there's an Arabic uh, fable. A master and his uh, disciple were crossing the desert. They had a camel in between them. So they uh, travel through the day at night near an oasis. They are they are pitching up the tent and it is a disciple's duty to take care of the camel. So the uh, disciple is, uh, so he is also very tired because they travel the whole day and he doesn't take for the camel to a pole. He just says, Allah you take care of the camel, I am tired, I am going to bed. He goes to bed without tethering the camel. Next day, naturally the camel is gone. It gets wandered off or somebody stolen it. So the master comes, the master comes and asks, what happened to the camel? I said, I don't know. The disciple says, don't blame me. You told me to trust in Allah. I trusted in Allah. And I told him not once, but thrice I told him, take care of the camel. I'm going to bed. But it is Allah's fault. I'm not at fault here at all. The master says, trust in Allah, but tether the camel first. Trust in Allah, but tether the camel first because Allah's hands are he works through your hands. He doesn't have any other hands other than yours. God works through us only. It is very easy to trust God. Trust well, that was the wisdom which we got from Brinda Ganesh last week. The full video is available in my YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly log in for Nipargo. You will all enjoy it. of introduction of the guest speaker this evening. Well, uh, Gita has been with us for quite some time now. He has been with us on a, on a couple of occasions earlier. He needs no introduction. In fact, I would like to thank my childhood friend Sujata Krishnamurti, who has joined from Kala Masjid, Michigan, USA, for getting uh, Gita on board to us. Thank you, Sujata. Thank you so much. Now, since we have a procedure to follow, and also for the benefit of new listeners to uh, join us this evening, as an uh, introduction will be seems necessary. Well, uh, Gita is the MBA of Finance from Michigan State University, USA. She has worked in the US with multinational companies as a consultant, implementing financial systems for over 20 years. My God, that's a long time. Well, on account of personal grounds, she had to move to Mumbai in 2018 leaving behind a career and home in the U.S. Why did she have to move? A father who was in his 90s had started showing signs of dementia and she wanted to be able to provide the full-time care he needed as his Alzheimer's progressed. In the past four years, her primary focus has been caring for her elderly parents. Over a period of time, she has also become a passionate advocate for dementia patients and caregivers and provide information on a topic that is widely misunderstood. Well, that's the short and sweet profile of Gita Ayer, our guest speaker this evening. And it's really uh, nice to show that she has spent a lot of time in US and significant time in India working in both places. We'd like to hear from her how she feels working in both these different atmosphere. Well, uh, it's time for her to take over, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, we'll all have a market new status, but we do not discuss the thought process. On her completion, we will have an open session. Deepa Ayer, the floor is all yours now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Subramanian, for um, the introduction and also for inviting me again. Um, 
So as usual, I am going to talk in Tamil and English. I will keep switching. Um, so first, I had told him that I'm not a professional speaker. And uh, so I'm, you know, I was speaking about dementia uh, quite a bit, but uh, he's he said that this is a very informal group and uh, i could it might be of interest if i shared my experiences working in the two countries um so i have spent almost an equal number of years in the us and in india uh, my work experience is really mostly in the us uh, i have only worked the last one year um in india but um i thought it might be of interest um, uh, to share some of the um experiences i've had so far uh, at some point of time I'll, i i put together a powerpoint uh, if i can share it not yet um i hope that will be okay sure sure I'll yeah give it, I'll give it right yeah i'll let you know yeah so um i grew up in uh, bombay and um i went through my studies i did my bcom and then actually my first work experience was also in bombay but i was 19 years old when i started i after my bcom right away you know i wrote the bank exam it's a typical story a lot of people do that and uh, i worked in a, in canara bank for 3 years um, and um, so that was my first work experience and then i moved to the us in 87 um, as a student so i went to michigan state university to do my mba finance uh, one of the reasons i moved to michigan was um, my sister both my sisters were in michigan at that time i'm the youngest in the family and um, both both my sisters were in michigan the uh, my uh, second sister was uh, actually doing her phd at that time so i had i had a family set up there and i was actually living with my sister for a year and uh, so one thing in the context of what we are discussing um in case people um want you know there are uh, young people want wanting to go to the us um i think the experience of pe- someone moving there directly to work is probably slightly different as opposed to someone who goes there as a student lives the student life on campus and uh, um and then gets a job so it's i think it's slightly different because you go there and you're on campus and you're getting to know um people your age and you you know get ex- you're getting exposed to the culture and the make all the mistakes and uh, you you struggle with the accent and a lot of those things so you get that out of the way and then when you go into the corporate world um, you know it's 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 a different environment so it's it's less of a struggle i think um so after my mba my first uh, work experience um, it was in 89 uh, it was a bad it was very difficult at that time to get an interview even and there was an economic downturn i remember and it was just in, near impossible um so one thing um, that has happened in my life uh, as per this work is i've never had to struggle for work really and i've never been stressed out about not getting a job because i think i've always been open to coming back to india i think that has always been in my mind so i've always uh, i see people worrying about green card you know when i have to get a job and what will happen i was always very f- a free spirit in that regard and um, okay if i don't get it so what my i can come back here that that was sort of the mindset i think when you don't go after something like that it just comes to you so my first job was um, offered to me by an indian uh, who owned uh, this company it's a manufact it was a manufacturing company and uh, it was really a a, a very uh, a basic job it was in accounting it was my first accounting type job but it was not uh, a management level job it was an analyst job and that's where i i started at the you know lowest rung and ground level and it gave me um i recognized my first interest in financial systems there because everything was manual it was a small company and uh, everything was punching in numbers on spreadsheets and i knew there was a way to there was a better way to do it so i was there for 6 years i got my green card there so i went through that um, process and um, then my first big break uh, came uh, when i joined price waterhouse coopers and um, it was price waterhouse at that time there was a big 3 at that time or big five i don't remember uh, um 
I think it was 97 or something like that. And um, so I was there with them for five years. So that was my real uh, exposure to corporate life in the US. So working um, with big companies and um, um, it was exciting time for me because, you know, I was young and uh, I was traveling every week. You know, I don't find that exciting anymore. Uh, but five, five years, uh, my routine was uh, getting uh, getting up, um, uh, you know, on for sun, traveling on Sundays. It was Sunday to Friday, then um, flying sometimes Monday early morning, flying and then coming back on Friday. So being out of the home, then drive, uh, driving to my hotel. And so it was all hotel points and miles and all of those things uh, that consultants get excited about. So that was my life. Um, but as, at the same time, um, it gave me a lot of confidence, actually, because uh, you work there and you get thrown in there and you work with these uh, other consultants. So my my experience was I was um, um, I realized how I, uh, unprepared I was after a degree because you don't. I think in hindsight, I think you should work before you go and get your MBA. That is my take on this. So because when you're doing your MBA, even for your um, projects and everything the raw material comes from your experience so um for me it was different you know working in canada bank is not really helping me to um do my mba uh, so a lot of a lot of students i see now they after their undergraduate um, degree they work for a few years and then go that, get their mba so really just having an mba degree at that doesn't really prepare you for um, uh, consulting life but i I think I did pretty decently there and I learned a lot. And um, um, it was um, also exposure to corporate excesses. And it, those days were glorious days, uh, you know, a lot of money. Uh, you know, you get double digit uh, increments in salary, only in consulting, because in corporate America, normally if you go to the, I was an automotive uh, no, with the automotive companies most of the time you just get like two to three percent raises every year that's pretty standard but in consulting it was different you could get double digit um 20 percent 25 percent uh increments and you know and then we would uh have these extravagant um events uh, you know where they just fought over each other to run up the bill and you know it was crazy uh, it was all new to me i was just absorbing and observing and uh but uh, also learning at the same time. So what now looking back, uh, the ex when I talk about corporate America, what I'm, it is very structured. So it is about policies. Uh, it is about, it's very structured. So I, I will come back to that. I have a slide on that, that it is, a, uh, it is very uh, rule-based and you have like uh, um, estate, uh, you know, procedures and, uh, um, you know, how to build billing systems, systems to follow, the, to implement those procedures. So that also became the basis of my, the jobs that I did later, you know, financial systems. Um, so those 10 years, uh, five year, after five years, uh, again, there was an economic downturn. There were mass layoffs and um, I got laid off from PricewaterhouseCoopers and I was not unhappy because I was done with all the travel and it was enough for me. And then again, uh, the next uh, stint uh, was uh, for 10 years uh, with another huge multinational company called Bosch. You may have heard of Robert Bosch, Bosch Appliances. Uh, I think in India, people have heard of Bosch Appliances, dishwashers and, uh, and washing machines and so forth. So uh, it's a German company. And uh, interestingly, I had never heard of that company. And I remember, uh, again, I, I, I will say that I did not really try hard for this job. I was actually driving from Cleveland and uh, I got a call. I had uh, posted my resume on many different job um, portals and uh, some recruiter called me and said, uh, there is a job with Bosch and I quickly went home and Googled Bosch. I was like, what does Bosch do? I never heard of it. Um, and I got that job. Um, so that was my, the beginning of the kind of job that I do now with the kind of systems uh, that I work with in financial systems, specifically Oracle financial systems. So that's what um, I do now. Um, that position uh, actually uh, gave, uh, helped me um, really 
figure out what I enjoy doing. I really enjoy uh, improving processes and designing sy good systems um, that can um, be solid for a long time and uh, training people, training people in using the systems and supporting um, people who are using our systems. So that is in a nutshell is the kind of job that I, I have always done, um, you know, at least in the last uh, 15, 20 years. So, uh, it was good because I got to work with some real smart people. I didn't, I don't, I'm not a programmer. I'm more of a, a an accounting finance person, but I don't like a, to do accounting. Uh, it's bore. I think it's boring, um, but I'm in between the accountants and the tech, techies, you know, programmers. So I don't program, I don't, but I'm in between um, making each other understand the, the language they speak. So um, translating the requirements uh, to the technical people and our, uh, if they want a new calculation, how to program it and so forth. So, uh, and I, and, uh, the great, I also like to travel, but I had had not too much of it. At that point of time, I reached the stage, I want to travel, but not occasionally, like maybe once, even once a month is okay, once a quarter. So I had that. So I got to travel to many different countries. I, uh, within the U.S. for sure, I su we supported the automotive uh, pl uh, plant locations in the U.S. Um, and it was a high visibility position because everybody used our system and uh, so I, everybody knew me. Um, so that gave me a lot of confidence. Um, uh, you know, I was so, I remember the first time I had to give, train people and I was so nervous. They, they thought that I needed a microphone. And uh, because I would speak so softly, I was just not confident. Um, but that is where I became confident, you know, standing in front of people and speaking. Because I learned that if you know your subject matter, it doesn't matter. You can figure things out, you know. It's okay. And it's also what I learned. Uh, this is very important, I think. I think what I learned is um, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not know things. So you don't... Uh, I'll come back to this point again, but I think one of the things that I think that is different between Indians and people working in the U.S. is if you don't know, you just say you don't know. You don't fake it. You don't uh, say something else and uh, it, because it comes across as a lie. And um, it, so it's okay to say, um, I don't know, but I will find the answer up for you. So a lot of times in training, I would do that. And I could, they realize, oh, in the, okay, yeah, it's a good question. I will come back to it. And, and I will always come back to it. I will always figure it out and send them an email saying, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that, but I spent some time looking at it and this is the answer. So they respect you for that. So this is a, typically a recommended practice in the US um, that they know that you're not going to just bluff, uh, so, you know, so you over time your reputation is very important they know that okay Geetas she will always give you the answer the right answer and um, so about travel I got to travel to many countries Mexico many times so it gave me a lot of um, exposure to different cultures as well um, Mexico I traveled to Germany obviously it's a German company I traveled to Japan and China a couple of times and Australia um, yeah, so I got my fair bit of uh, travel um, to satisfy me in that aspect. And um, also uh, you learn about different cultures. So today, but uh, my, most of my experience was in the US. So, um, so we'll talk about US versus India today. So um, after those 10 years um, in Bosch, the, those were very crucial years because they, I think they made me what I am, uh, how I am in the in the workplace. I think um, the confidence that I have in my job, and um, so um, that also taught me what I'm passionate about. I'm, you know, about improving business processes. When I talk about business processes, it was financial systems, la budgeting, panar the budgeting system, forecasting system, reporting system, designing calculations and quotation systems. So that is what how how to design those and how to uh, help people use those systems. So after ten years at Bosch, uh, the last four years uh, before moving to India, 
I worked with a com another automotive company, uh, another multinational company called uh, Cooper Standard Automotive. It was a much smaller company. So you may have heard about SAP. I was hired as an SAP SME. Uh, again, I, I think I've always been lucky. Uh, one thing I do is I never, I, I, when, in an interview, I never, I never bluff. So I just, again, that comes with experience also, I think, you know, I, I, I mean, to be fair, when you're, when your first job, you're like very desperate for a job. So you tend to probably exaggerate a little bit and you know, kind of, you make some mistakes. Uh, but at that point of time, they, they were hiring me in the role of an SAP a subject matter as expert. And I had not worked with SAP in that role for a while. So I, but even in spite of me telling them that they were okay with it and they hired me, but I quickly, um, my project got halted and I got moved over to, they, we ha they had hired a lot of us as, in the SAP uh, role and the entire project stopped and then they were wondering what to do with all of us sitting uh, there. So they moved us to different roles depending on our experience and I got to back to my Oracle financial systems role. Very, very interesting. I got to learn um, new systems, uh, related systems. And um, so I was uh, very happy. I'm always happy when I'm not doing the same thing. I'm, I like project work and uh, I'm learning new, uh, a new system, how, to, how it works. And uh, so it's not just the same thing every day. So the role was uh, that of a financial systems manager and um, uh, again, it was very similar to what I was doing in Bosch in the sense that I got to travel a bit. I traveled to India also, and I, I will talk about that because it's very interesting in contrasting. Um, it, it was an example of uh, the contrast between working in India versus the U.S. for me. Um, we supported um, uh, many locations. I went to France. I went to Poland. Um, so there were a few travel opportunities for me there to Canada many times. Um, so this is uh, then uh, in 2018, I worked with 2008, uh, un until 2018 with Cooper Standard. And then my father, uh, my parents had moved to the US in 2014. So 2014 to 18, they were with me. Um, and then my father had his Alzheimer's and then I made this decision. Again, I think a lot of people ask me, me, a pretty, uh, how did you leave everything and come to uh, you, uh, India? I, I find this question very, uh, it doesn't, uh, irrelevant to me because I think I just did what I had to do. And I did, it was not a very difficult decision. Uh, what was difficult was just uh, selling my house. I couldn't sell my house. And those were my challenges. But the decision itself of moving to India was not difficult because I always, was open to moving here. And I, I had, I used to visit India every year. I had kept in touch with uh, my, some friends and I had a core group of people I was in touch with. So that was never uh, uh, an, uh, an issue of, oh, how will I adjust? I think I'm okay with that. Um, so, um, so that was uh, uh, my move to India. So now I think I would like to, if you, if you let me, um, um, share, uh, share my. Yeah, it's already given. Oh, I can, I can share. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to main, mention one thing when I was in, um, Bosch, uh, actually, I had an opportunity to go to the U.S., uh, to Germany for five years. And I was really, really excited about it as an expat. I would go there. And it's a great opportunity financially as well as um, I would have had the opportunity to live in a different country and um, move and all that. But I want to mention that because I declined it. It was a very difficult decision to decline because again, for my parents, at that time, my parents were, were very healthy, but they were already in their eighties and I didn't want to be away from them. And I thought I couldn't have taken them to the, to Germany. So my, the way I was making my decisions was always, was already similar, um, that 
because I couldn't have taken them there and I would have been in Germany for five years and what if something happened? What if I'm not able to be there for them? Uh, similarly, I had opportunity to move uh, to a plant in, um, uh, in, within the US, which would have been a great experience for me and it's something that I really wanted. So what I'm saying is you're always prioritizing in your life, you're always prioritizing uh, your decisions, um, uh, you're, you're uh, prioritizing based on your value system. What is important to you? Okay, I can go to Germany, but then you're away from your parents. You know, what do you want more? So I think uh, I just want to I mention that uh, when people struggle with the decision of coming to India, you know. Okay, so um, this is something I just quickly put together. Um, so what are the major differences? So now um, I have really only worked for uh, for the first for the last four years, 2018 to 22, I did not work. Um, I, I was completely focused on caring for my father and um, it was all about dementia, Alzheimer's and not having sleep. And uh, But I was, um, I, I, I became a dementia care advocate and um, I was working with a friend um, um, in, as a dementia care advisor for her company and I was interviewing a lot of people with dementia as well as people were caring for them. So I was doing that and that was, I was I wrote some blogs and uh, so I was doing a work that was very important to me, but somewhere I missed the work. I was not making any money. So I missed that. Uh, there was somewhere it was because I had left behind a career and that was not very planned. So I think it bothered me a little bit uh, that I wasn't, uh, I was just uh, not earning. I don't think it's the right way to think, but I, uh, um, uh, it, it was there at, um, at the back of my mind. So, and also whenever I would talk to people who who were doing a similar kind of work and I would get really passionate about it, I would talk to them about uh, financial processes and systems and I would get pretty excited. So I knew that I, I wanted to know that I can still work, that I had not completely lost it. So I tried and again, the job came very easily to me. Um, I applied for it on LinkedIn and within a, a week, I got this job. And um, uh, in fact, in the interview, I told them, uh, you cannot ask me anything very technical because I don't know, I haven't touched a computer in four years. I haven't touched the system. So if you're gonna ask me, uh, okay, how will you solve this? How do you, which screen do you go to? I cannot answer. But I know I have all this experience and I have I was good at what I did. And um, I think I can pick it up very quickly and they believed me. So I think one thing I want to say is, I think when you speak the truth and you're honest, it comes, comes through and um, things become easier for you. Um, so one of the main differences that I have noticed, uh, and I have, for this uh, discussion today, uh, so I didn't want it to be based, uh, it is mostly based on my experience, obviously we are generalizing here and, um, so I talked to a few people and there were some generalities. So based on that, I put this together. Um, the differences are mostly cultural. So in Indian culture, everything is relative, you know, uh, time is relative and, um, um, you know, there are very few absolutes. Uh, it's there in our psyche, I think. Um, no concept of commandments, you know, there is no one God that you follow. There are, okay, the Prachinda, Shiva, Prachinda, Shiva, Krishna, whatever, you know. And if you want to go to the temple, you go. If you don't, it's very um, fluid. A lot of those, the belief systems are, um, you know, it's, it's very individual. It is not like everybody's believing the same thing. The very difference, uh, very, uh, you know, it's unique to your, um, um, a person. Uh, and this reflects in a lot of things, even art and music and dance, you know, music, uh, you know, it's not uh, written, uh, you're not uh, following, uh, yeah, you have the kritis, or in, if you're following Karnati music, the kritis, and then you have the notations. But then there's a lot of, um, uh, even even from the scale, in the part, in the Shutilala Parnam, like if you look at best Western music, um, there are, they talk about seven notes, but in, we have more uh, shrutis in between uh, the, uh, in between notes are there. And, uh, and it is very, it's, it's always, you're not singing the notes uh, 
saga pra reena adukku nadula you it's always everything is like fluid in uh, indian music is dance everything if you compare ballet to the indian bharatanatyam or odissi or something like that um so i think it's kind of embedded in how we think about things how we um we are in many aspects uh, i think it, it it's we may not even realize that so um it's not very linear or very precise uh so everything is sort of pretty much approximate so in the pretty much i want to give an example uh, why i want to contrast it to the american culture i my client is the, an american uh, it's an american client so i work all night actually now on the right night shift uh, sangala on 4 o'clock uh, i work from 7 to 4 in the morning 7 pm to 4 am so um so recently um, um you know there was an issue with the, with the client side and then the client wanted to know where we were he wanted to know about the status so i'm the lead for this project and so we had pretty much he said what is the status where are we so i said uh, we were pretty much done like i mean we were done uh, done really nanga ella pannitom but i wanted to recheck it i didn't want to i wanted to give myself a buffer in case there was a problem so i just said we are pretty much done and he, he just uh, bluntly asked me what do you mean by pretty much what is pretty much so this is an a very classic example of india versus sir now pretty much is uh, approximate sort of i'm done because you're giving it yourself a way out saying now that pretty much and then that means i may not have done a few things they want you to what the american culture is you say that you're done and then uh, if something happens then you know uh, okay then we take responsibility for it i did not check it twice and that's why this happened but everything was complete so that is a good answer evla panniyaache but ana naga renda andrava check pannala so there may be one or two mistakes but everything is done but pretty much na they they don't know what percentage is done that doesn't tell them but india la everything is pretty much and uh, so there is like a certain chaos that is embedded in how we do things absence of order and unpredictability uh, which is normal um bending the rules is normal because we don't really follow rules everything is not written down in the nammude scriptures lend the varadhan nenikiren you know like everything was oral tradition and uh, how we learn and um actually even about the mathematics how i how i learned um, here in india la na math i pretty padichena i would whereas um, us la ponona my nephew was my, you know uh i have taught him maths and he would come to me with a problem and he would show me his book and gava book puriye puriyadu because everything is like step 1 step 2 step 3 by the time i got to step 6 i i would have law, uh, you know forgotten what i was trying to do so i would just tell him skip this and i will teach you how to do it and i'll just go from step 1 3 and 5 you know i'll just um it's a different way of uh, learning it's very um they make a uh, i think a science of everything everything is like very structured procedural so that is the crux of um, the difference i think um absence of order like number traffic ke paaklame it's very easy i i will not be able to drive in india so that is part of the experience difference for me um you know even a lot of people coming from the us they have they struggle uh, when it comes to even crossing the street and the pakam pakano you know you you drive on the right or wrong side depending on uh, which side is right um so for me i could i cannot drive more because um, there is no order everybody uh, you know someone who visited from the us uh, said oh that yellow line is just an approximation it's a probability of where your car might be so you know pretty much approximate so the car might be here but it might uh, be everywhere really so um that is there is in the us la vand our example a good example about traffic is even if all the traffic signals sala samayam power outage irundha ella traffic signal um poidum but uh, even then there will be no chaos because the four uh, sides lend the four way uh, street either uh, in the intersection irundha it will be it become like a four way stop and people will follow whoever came first gets to go first and everybody will follow this rule so it is very rule based everybody will follow rules and um, then it's very predictable india la apdi illa yaar modala mundikirudhu line la thalli ittu andha mari 
so uh, that is i think is a very cultural thing um individual thinking so in corporation la adnala rules la adnala okay whatever someone feels like a boss feels something or the owner of the company feels something so it's not just policies and procedures um whereas in the us everybody has to adhere to those policies and the uh, bible uh, of the company or mission uh, the statement mission statement and rules uh india when there is a relationship based so it's uh, i i also see that it is very informal and uh, informal uh, so friend, uh, colleagues or friends and a lot of those things relationships are very important the personal relationships are very uh, important and they it's valued a lot so that is uh, a difference um it's not i'm not talking about this everything in terms of good or bad everything has its place ellame moderation like there is no rule um i think it's not good but too many rules us la everything by the book is also can also become a problem so i'm i'm just presenting the um, you know differences i'm i i have been happy in the us i'm happy in india so i think i can survive happily in both countries so us law like i said everything is precise and absolute um uh, belief and uh, our uh, the way the religion and the belief lay and everything is uh, like that so there's one god and you have a belief and you will do this and you'll go to heaven uh, which is your destination um and so forth the corporate culture um is based on similar written mission statements your commandment the vision you have a vision statement that is written down and uh, standards and procedures statement uh, the standard operating procedures or sops they call them uh, to achieve results also to like the journey to the promised land um it's a very institutional thinking um as opposed to the individual thinking so you have a corporate way of thinking which may be completely completely different from what you uh, think individually and it's based on structure so adherence to procedures policies everything is uh, very important and it is um, um the biggest challenge that i have experienced in our job learning when in the last one year i completed just one year is uh, communication so for me i think uh, because i worked for so many years in the us i'm more um, um us like uh in my work ethics and my way i work and um uh certain aspects i'm i think i have my i retain my indian cultural values like action in and the mathematics a step one i don't work like step 1 2 3 4 i will change my procedures and oh this doesn't make sense uh, i will get rid of it uh you know i'm i think that comes from my indian upbringing but um um lang- uh, so some one of the problems i have i'm facing is language proficiency issues um at least in my line of work and it is this is especially with um um new uh, rumba young young um, people who are working in our group and they come from vernacular medium so they have a hard time understanding and expressing and um so uh, that is an issue that i am facing and and what is frustrating to me is um that the lack of effort so for me it is very obvious and i think that is something another thing that i want to highlight is india and pakrena okay for me it's a problem it's a problem that can be fixed if you have a language proficiency issue you can fix it but i don't see that effort you know um is the person will start talking to me in tamil okay geeta na tamil la solren appadi or i say no in a meeting you have to speak in english so or uh, i i have to make them read the sentence can you tell me what you understand so uh, the lack of effort is a little uh, uh, more of a challenge for me and frustrate uh, it's frustrating um direct this is a huge difference um people here uh, might think uh, in the in my company also that i'm very direct as so i'm probably uh, like um, the client they you know the client separate director call like how my uh, client said you know what does pretty much mean you know uh, so uh they think i'm i'm very direct uh and i i am so this is ambiguous so chutti valach or answer or question simple question kettena nee mudichiya mudikkiyana they will start with excuses 
இந்த வேலை முடிஞ்சுதான் ஒன்னு And then we will come. So uh, that is a big difference because they, it, you will never get a direct answer. It will be a very roundabout answer. Um, so um, one interesting thing, um, which again, um, I think it is something for me to understand when I, I am in India and I think I have to understand the cultural aspect and I have to maybe adapt a little bit. So one of my co- uh, cousins that I spoke to said, um, when you ask people, uh, when can something something very simple like when can you complete this task it's a very normal question for a us lender for a project manager to ask it's a very normal question eppo mudiyum adu it is not a simple question sometimes here it's because they immediately it has got a lot of meaning there is a lot of fear that comes with it and uh, oh uh, that i have i not have i shown that i i uh, you know the mudike mudiyadu or some you know like there are a lot of things they assume with that so instead of asking we have to give a now so normally direct ah kekka mudiyadu and the question you have to give a whole introduction about we have this uh, project and uh, project manager idu kekkra namakku oru maasa irukku adukku mudike porudhu adha indha task la irukku idu first panni indha naal steps irukku idu pannanum நீங்க நாலு பேர் இருக்கேன் உங்க நாலு பேருக்கு இந்த நாலு டாஸ்க் கொடுக்க போறேன் சோ வி ஹாவ் டு டிவைட் இது அப்ப உன்னோட இந்த டாஸ்க் உன்னால முடியுமா இது எப்ப முடிக்க முடியும் சோ இதுக்கு ஐ ஹாவ் டு கிவ் அ பிக் இன்ட்ரோடக்ஷன் சோ अदरवाइज தே மைட் ஃப்ரீஸ் அண்ட் தே மே யூ மே கெட் திஸ் ஹானஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் சோ திஸ் இஸ் இட் கிரியேட்ஸ் இட்ஸ் a very um, um, again a cultural thing how you have uh, grown up and um, um, that so um, the second one letting someone know when one is unlikely to meet deadline this is huge even now us la irukum bodhu in the problem are and i have worked with um, uh, an indian uh, i worked on a project with an indian team um, this is not uh, appreciated by the americans at all it reflects very poorly actually from when you come to the us so people who want to come to the us they should really know this um, You, when you when they ask you when you can complete this task if you say that you can say two weeks or even if it even even if you can complete in two weeks if you can say three weeks that's okay they may say that can you push it anmari but saying three weeks and not finishing it um is bad and if you're not able to finish it for some reason uh, you don't wait till the last day to tell them so you know that and the risk okay i'm not going to finish it அது அது நிறைய தடவை பண்ண மாட்டேங்கிறா இந்தியன்ஸ் இங்க இருக்கு இந்தியா அது ஒரு ப்ராப்ளம் இருக்கு ஸோ தே டோன்ட் கிவ் யூ தீட்பேக் அண்ட் இது எனக்கு என்னோட என்னோட வேலையில நிறைய ஆறுது அண்ட் வி ஹாவ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் டிஸ்கஷன்ஸ் அபவுட் தாட் அண்ட் லைஃப் நோ திஸ் இஸ் நாட் டவுன் யூ ஹாவ் டு டெல் மீ அண்ட் சிமிலர்லி கம்யூனிகேஷன் சம்டைம்ஸ் ஐ கெட் புல்ட் இன் டு அனதர் ஐம் டெடிகேட்டட் டு அ கிளைண்ட் ஐ கெட் புல்ட் இன் டு அனதர் கிளைண்ட் டு ஹெல்ப் அவுட் so i'll say that okay i have i'm very busy i, I can help you for a half an hour and i t- i give them my input and um, solutions and then i leave and i tell them okay ninga adukaprama please let me know ninga what do you find out how this problem got resolved i want you to let me know they'll say yes 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 definitely we'll give you keep you posted now. you'll never hear from them so they that courtesy is very important this is very us la they are very particular about these things if somebody has helped you Uh, in the same thank you india la or or my dialogue mari added close relationships you don't say thank you sorry you know i think it's real nonsense you have to appreciate people who have helped you you have to say thank you and you keep them in the loop pa yarada yar yarada namalukku job help help panna namalukku job kadichina you call them and tell them and it kadichu you know it, it, these are things that are very important um and uh, so that is sometimes missing here and um, saying no and i don't understand so this is another thing that stems from some kind of fear i think um they will a lot of people from india they will not uh, who have not worked in the us um who don't or who don't have a lot of experience working in the us they'll not say no or i don't understand so um so i was working in a project when i was uh, with bosch and we didn't have the time and uh, so we had given them the requirements and everything ella purinjida abdina ella panittu kadshila 
what we got delivered was completely different from what we had asked for. So they never said no. They always said uh, understood. So there is the US level that um, I think maybe uh, the China and the confidence school the patient they, they don't they are okay with not knowing and they will stop uh, the teacher and um, they they would say that the only uh, stupid question is the one you don't ask. Uh, there is a saying that they Maria uh, Market um, the US So it's like what you do. There is nothing that is stupid. Every question is uh, uh, you know worth answering and worth considering. The only stupid question is the one that you don't you never ask. So other other one the kunjam number illa illa nene kere. So US life you need something you ask. But I'm accountability. So that is the thing, you know, not making excuses. I said, you don't meet a deadline and then you make excuses. So that is very uh, uh, frustrating for someone like me who has worked in the US for many, many, uh, for de decades. And then um, I am I am like very particular that I, I, if, if I get into a problem, I will not leave it until I uh, solve it. And if I cannot solve it, I will I will give the client updates. And if I cannot solve it, I will tell them this is going to take me some time. It's it's more complicated than I thought. So you give the client always appreciates that. So they trust me. They trust me that Gita or Sonna, then she will do it. Or if she is not doing it, there is a, she will tell me why it's not going to happen. So in India, a lot of times what will happen is it will not be done, and we will have a meeting to review the final product, and they will say. Uh, or they will kill some party or something like that. So um, that is a problem. Um, giving credit, what I mean uh, by this is, this is a very, um, this is something I learned in the US. Um, I, I also did. Uh, if someone, if it's someone comes up with an idea or a number of patient work, the number team team, even someone junior to me, they say, oh, how, why can't we do it this way or something like that? And I think it's a great idea. Then we discuss it uh, with the high, higher, uh, in the high, in um, bigger meetings. Um, I will always give credit. Uh, So-and-so uh, came up with this idea. I know he, he thought that this is a better way to do it. What do you think? Um, whereas, other than India Pakre and Illanaria, I have seen that a lot of times, um, even in my own company, I get spent hours on something. And um, uh, then someone else took over, another Indian. And then they went to the client to uh, explain the problem, but never gave credit to this person for doing all the work. So that is a big no-no in the US. You have to give credit, a small or big, if it's... If somebody has worked on it, you give them credit. And um, so it doesn't look like you did all the work. Um, so again, getting back to people, I already talked about that. If um, somebody has, uh, if I had asked for a status or something and um, let me know how this goes and just um, tell them um, what's happening. So this is, I have already touched on some of these. What is dishonesty? So one of the Naria picked a patient at the, um, this one came up, so uh, you can uh, uh, dishonesty. We don't want to. Uh, there are a lot of good things, but uh, it is. We are talking about U.S. versus Indiana. Sometimes some of the are um, what we may think is okay. They may be. They it may be perceived as dishonesty. Is what I mean. So we are okay uh, with saying why, telling white lies, or making small. Unme lada thekore chinnna poi. And I think we have all seen that. That China has seen that. But when you are at home, you are at home. You are at home. You are at home. Some excuse. Or all the excuse. And when they go, we are all children are also learning from that. Actually, uh, I'm, I've always been very direct. All the animals are at home. U.S. actually, they are at home. All the Roman own. There is a cultural difference also. Roman own the cake matter. Uh, I cannot come. They will. Uh, they will accept it. Whereas India has a little bit of a problem, people will not come. That's a really problem, so you put you in a, uh, in a pressure cooker, so you have to make up some excuse. Uh, maybe, you really, maybe you don't really feel like going, and, uh, but you have to, you can't just say, I don't feel like going, because they will be hurt. So a lot of little things, uh, we make, and they're making excuses, uh, which is normalized. It, it just, we don't even think about it as a bad thing. 
but it, it enters other areas. That is when it becomes a bad thing. So, Naria US la fake certificates. It's all very easy to make in India. US la na kapi It's just you will get into big time trouble. Uh, fake uh, certificates uh, It's not. I don't think it's possible. I mean, you have corruption, but you have very high levels uh, in the levels la So fake certificates or exaggerations and and all that. Maybe small exaggerations, okay, because they want to quantify. Nane and resume la. They wanted everything quantified. Other on India, our problem, US uh, So uh, if you cannot just say I improved this process. You have to say I improved this process by 50% or something like that. So they want to quantify everything, which doesn't make sense. So you make up some number and put that in there. Um, but really putting something that you have never done. Um, in fact, someone asked me, hey, Geetha, one of the company, Solomon, SAP, he has never done it. And I said, no, I will not do it. If you have not done it, I will not say that you will. You have done it. Uh, so um, this third point, having someone represent you in interviews, um, this one, um, this one, uh, someone uh, who owns the company, uh, my friend who's, uh, with who, uh, for whose company I was a dementia care advisor, she told me uh, this was one of the problems she had in the interviewing process that she was really frustrated and she was appalled. See, again, she has also lived in the U.S. for many years. So people who have lived in the U.S. for many years and really uh, assimilated, Nanga, uh, it is shocking, actually, that um, interview people, when they are remote, so these are things that um, uh, some of us will never dream of doing. So then it becomes like Naria in the Indians na kolle careflar kona na thamari or peer the And um, so what she was saying is, where does it start? It did not start overnight. These people must have cheated in exams also. Exam like copy panet pa, cheat panet pa. So it has started uh, from parenting. Because uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of, many of us are not like that. Um, because Inga, I have never been like that. And I know a lot of people who are very uh, particular about integrity and all that. So um, this is something... Uh, Definitely, I'm sure all of you will agree it's dishonesty. Uh, no, I, I already talked about not having the courage to say no. Uh, what she said, what my friend said is, if you cannot do something, don't lie. Or don't keep quiet. Say you cannot do it. And uh, I think it comes from, from for us, uh, what I want to, I have understood is, I mean, people need to understand that they are, you're not going to be fired because you don't know something today. So, but if you don't know this last next week, I have a problem with it. If you have not tried to learn it, I have a problem with it. If you don't know today, okay, you tell me you don't know, I will teach you. So, this is the mindset of a, a US uh, company. They don't expect you to know everything. Um, but I think India, when, the, when you uh, people say no because uh, they don't, have, they don't say no because they are afraid that they are going to be fired or maybe there is a large employee pool here. competition. So maybe they think that you are now So that is not uh, true. Um, so again, you know, why do people lie? It's rooted in fear. Um, so a lot of things have become normal. Um, I think I should finish soon because they are clo coming close to time. Um, then colleagues, uh, how is it working with colleagues over there versus here? That's also part of the culture. So it's professional relationship versus informal. So um, uh, in, in, everything is part of corporate. Your family, like families take uh, vacations together. People um, like Nethi Canada or if colleague when the phone pani Gita normal to first day or something or bike going in a first time day. I mean they think of me as part of their family and um, and and the Mary or a relationship. And yeah, it's very important. I think they don't want just a strictly professional relationship. Whereas in the U.S., it is they are also a bit uh, Maria Americans. Uh, I'm not Maria. A few of them have come to my house for lunch and, and my colleagues, and they will help me if I need something, some help at home. Um, but boundaries, boundaries are very 
important india la konja boundary respecting uh, that's number uh, we cross the boundaries and uh, we are okay with that so we go into personal rants um, gossiping a konja samaya and uh, so anga vand it is there also but boundaries are more uh, uh, valued and respected and expect they expect that you respect it um asking for help ange uh, vanda in here also you can do that but uh, i think i found that people are very helpful here and there also you can do it you can ask for your colleagues for help uh, even outside your uh, job maybe inge konja kuda jaasi pannala irukum or inge vand my colleagues some of my colleagues might think that they can visit me and come and stay with me and all that which is not which doesn't happen they are very other adla boundaries are they very particular about that i idla enna solrena one of the things uh, that uh, example i want to give examples i want to give is uh, wedding uh, you think that you are a very close friend of your uh, you know colleague now over time the boss la vand nariya you know we had a good friendship going we used to go for lunch um and all we used to celebrate each other's birthday and culturally yaroda uh, birthday na naanga da kudin povom ava birthday ki inge vand ulta yaroda birthday ava treat kudukona so those that's a difference um so uh, the one of the colleagues was getting married and she was planning her wedding and there's angala veg wedding na wedding registry irukum registry la they will say um in the idala venu you can pick you can pick pick on spoon also and you can say you, you are buying the spoon so anna matri so uh, i had assumed that i'm going to get invited to the wedding no you will rarely get invited so you may be a very close friend anga uh, see these are the boundaries so they, they doesn't because you are their friend because uh, you have gone to their ho- house and before because you have discussed a lot of things that doesn't mean you're going to get invited to a wedding or something so idella und initially therilena konja or surprising or shocking a irukum but now it's it's a very that's how it is that's the culture they uh, it's a uh, very different um anga apra peer reviews irk so you may be a very close uh, friend of your colleague but they may, they will also review you and they will give you good and bad reviews um and review of the manager also happens uh, so my friend my co- uh, cousin was saying he works for amazon and he was saying his uh, subordinates um, uh, review him every month and they look they do a trend line how his feed how the feedback is so adala konja jaasti anga anga more established i think after work gatherings anga irukku inge of course ella vandrilende ellame remote da so we have had i have met uh, on off site meetings but uh, um but anga vande a lot of times people may not come they don't have a problem saying no and um, it's very different uh, culturally i've seen uh, Uh, um, americans are very like work kapra va pura it is a different thing you don't the boundary comes in there um so uh, whereas number uh, india la undna namba yaryadu veetu we may call them home vera country lena vandirukana come home for dinner or lunch it may it will not happen we will have we used to have people come from mexico to the us we used to have uh, a nice time evening la they are on their own so that is uh, how it used to be um then if it's uh, generally uh, holidays vacations people think that india la konja jaasti um nariya irukku compared to the us in india i get like four weeks anga usually new job la chenna oru varana kadikum adukapra maybe two weeks i my i started with two weeks and i ended up with three weeks the longer you work and um, vacations so uh, holidays also inge irukra madri avluva illa um there are many employee savings initiatives inge irukra mari provident fund la kanmari anga irukku 401k and all that um anga vand medical uh, insurance programs we have like medical disability insurance uh, we get and uh, if you're disabled and you're not able to work short term disability long term disability so these kinds of benefits we have and um, um so maternity a lot of other those things. other uh, will preparation mental health inge vand india la we don't talk about mental health and all that nobody will talk about it. so there is no formal i don't find any formal uh, policy for that whereas there uh, you have all that they they will you can talk uh, you can they will have their own helpline and you can call and discuss and they will arrange for a counselor or something in that then of course training educational reimbursement uh, 
all of this is a lot of companies pay for MBA, but then you have to work with the company for so many years and all. <clears throat> Uh, inherent biases, uh, I'm going to quickly go through all of these. Uh, inherent biases are some things that we have and we don't even know. These programs that they formally um, talk about these things, gender biases. You know, women, uh, one of my, uh, someone I know said that when she was about to hire, um, so they they want to hire anga uh, the male female the uh, age these you cannot discuss it you cannot discuss in an interview are you married or you not married because you these are all uh, you you could even be fired for it you cannot ask uh, whereas inge vanda nariya na age is samam pakre inge vanda it is everywhere first day enoda enoda company le nariya dirva age vanda chu um oh at your age you are so energetic I go to the gym, they say, oh my God, you're so energetic at your age. You know, they just bring this up so much. Um, I'm going to official retirement age, it's like you're there. And uh, so a lot of the biases that you have towards male versus female, or now you have other genders, um, marital status, religion, nationality, mental health, uh, uh, if you have depression or something like that, you have biases. Uh, you so Angamanda, they have training for that, how to um, overcome, uh, become aware of your biases. So you don't uh, hire people based on, you don't get, uh, those biases don't get in the way of uh, uh, your hiring practice. Um, I will just uh, skip through this. It is just uh, related to what I talked about, diversity, inclusion, and equity. So Angamanda, uh, again, this is a big topic. Um, to, so your uh, number high number employee pool uh, you have men and women there are no like um, or, e or equality in um, uh, male versus female and other genders also um and um, equity is uh, you know everybody is equally treated considering it's not just equality but it's also equity taking into account uh, people's circumstances and inclusion everybody is included everybody has a voice and uh, uh, you can go to the higher levels and complain. And uh, they always have, again, uh, US or culture is about programs and policies. So they have all those grievances. Uh, uh, you, you will have a number and um, you it is all anonymous and you will not get into trouble and uh, and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, either one that I have not found here, but in general, I, we have, I have all these experiences. Americans are very much into giving to the community, more than the Indians even in the U.S. Um, Naria Church Lane, they will go and uh, go to different, uh, do community activities. In uh, our company, Bosch, we went uh, uh, repairing homes for uh, underprivileged people, uh, um, um, you know, so we were painting and driving nails and repairing and or cleaning a local park or neighborhood. And so those uh, companies will give us a day off to go and give us a T-shirt. And they used to encourage us to do that or, and also go to schools and teach uh, state, um, students uh, math, science, to and the money. Um, so finally, why? Um, uh, why do people go to the U.S.? And uh, I mean, my reasons were, may have been different. It's unique. People should know when I mean, they go for educational opportunities, maybe financial goals, uh, standard and quality of living. Um, and to India, like, why do people come back? Uh, for me, you know, obviously, uh, my parents. Uh, a lot of people come for family or a lot of people come because or uh, age uh, mela they may get insecure. Uh, someone was saying they they are having health issues. Oh, US library manage panom. Uh, India when you can hire people and uh, so those kinds of decisions also uh, factors drive your decision. Uh, medical um, US la medical care is very. If you don't have a work uh, a job a medical insurance medical care uh, is very expensive it can drain all your savings. So you need a job to have medical insurance. Um, only after, uh, I mean, 62 or whatever, you get, or maybe 65, maybe now, um, you get medic, medic government-sponsored insurance and it, it, they can be very expensive. Um, so better, whether you're in, you're in the US or India, you have to know, understand, and accept the cultural differences. 
um, and understand the ground reality, whether you're going to live in the US or India. So to be truly happy, and I think that is, um, and our own value systems will determine how you prioritize uh, various things. So that's it. Um, sorry, I think I went over. I thought that I will not have enough to say. I think I um, had a lot to share, I think. Um, so thank you for listening and giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much, Gita. That was an awesome presentation. In fact, you have given us a great uh, insight into how it is to work in India and in US. I mean, all that strikes me is uh, being a globe trotting successful finance professional, it would not have been very easy to make a decision to relocate to Mumbai. Though you made it sound very simple and easy. That's your monastery. And uh, it's very nice. But in, in this part of the world, we have a system called Jugaad, which means that we can find out answers for every damn thing. Every question on the sun is answered, not, not left unanswered. I don't, I don't think you get it in US. The Jugaad is very much prevalent in India. Yeah. All right, let's now open the session and let's hear what others have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly unmute your mic and go ahead. What else? It's an excellent session, very knowledgeable. We could uh, gather some information. Huh? Thank you, madam, very much. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you. I hope it was, I didn't make it too technical and too detailed. No, it was very interesting, very interesting to know. Very interesting. This is what we, this is interesting. I just wanted to know this thing only from you because how you feel it working in two different continents, two different countries, two different atmosphere, two different kinds of people, two different kinds of working environment. That matters a lot. Because for people who yeah, I are... Was, uh, like I said, it's a mindset also. For me, uh, you know, I look at everything as a problem. And how are you, what are the different options you have to solve that problem? So for me, I was facing the situation with my father's dementia. I had no intention of coming to India at that time. Um, so for me, that was the only thing that, so that it's your value system, right? I have, my value system said, I have to take care of my father and I have to give him good care. And then everything else was secondary to that. You know, that was, um, so everything fell in, I didn't worry. Uh, Everything else can be managed. And, and I had a, a support system here. I had cousins and there were there were some struggles. I had to learn the culture um, here a little bit, you know, working with attendance, people working, coming here, the communication problem comes. They, they will show up, they will not show up. And a lot of those things I talked about. But um, those were secondary to the care of my father. Well, the underlying point is all that has happened because you are a good human being. That's the that's reason. Thank you. Okay, we move in the final segment of uh, summarizing the summarizing the talk and probably proposing word of thanks. Mr. Subramanian, our secretary, would do the honors. Subramanian, sir, please go ahead. Hello, Namaskara. Uh, that was an awesome lecture. It was all started by Meena Lochini, Madam Devi Vunda Narul Vendum. Yen Sivina Yahatra Vendumne Padi Namakatongi Vicha. Of course, Madam has been introduced to us earlier as well when she gave a talk. And at this juncture, we should also thank her so that we could have a lecture by Dr. Rajamaya, which was one of the very good lectures we had. And uh, most of us gained a lot out of it. And uh, uh, a few observations I would like to say because uh, I have not lived in the U.S. Uh, we have been, our experiences has been mostly in India. and But for dealing with the Americans who come over here, of course, when you are in marketing, you try to align yourself to your customers' whims and fancies rather than you show your uh, culture and your colors and uh, we are always right for them. Uh, that's a different story. But it is very interesting. She has worked for some of the best companies, Price Waterhouse, which are one of the top uh, consultant, management consultant. She very nicely said that uh, the increments were double digit. The life uh, was very excellent Ex uh, compared to the struggling life at Detroit the people who struggle with the automobile companies uh, who get uh, an increase if you are a best performer, 
you get 5%, you are average, you get 3.5%. And if you're a little below, you get about 2.5%. If you are below that, you find another job. Uh, that has been their culture. And they have no qualms at all for firing people. And uh, many of the people keep wondering even now, Friday afternoon come, there are butterflies in their stomachs, whether the job will be there to come back on next Monday. Uh, fortunately, though it is creeping in, I would say, into the Indian uh, corporate life, by and large, the jobs have been fairly permanent. And uh, you need to manage your boss over here. It is not just the systems you take care of things. And her working in bots, she talked about. Uh, and she got the job when she was driving down to Michigan. And she spent five days in the workplace and two days in the, you know, for the weekend back home. There are all the pleasures that are uh, not there for most of us in India. And she said she did not like much of travel, though she has traveled to quite a number of countries by Indian standards. She has been to Canada many times. She has been to France, Poland, China, Japan, Australia. And of course, she would not have listed some of the countries what she has visited. The cultures are totally different. Uh, some of them are big divide of uh, Occidental and Oriental. Uh, something is uh, by the, you know, the number of jobs that are available and opportunities, you can afford to be uh, an American telling, I don't know, and an Indian in a corporate life telling the same way, I don't know, his job may be under question. Uh, what the boss would think is, he is not even willing to try, but whereas he says, I don't know, but I will try is appreciated in US, whereas telling, yeah, I know yes, some of it, and I'll try to what I can is what is appreciated over here. The work cultures are different, but all the same. Things have been changing quite a lot. And she had been coordinating. She says, though she is a BCom graduate, she hated accounts. It is just like the computer engineer. They don't like this uh, uh, programming. Uh, they don't like these things. Coding, for example, they don't like but she has been an excellent interface between the techies and the accountants so that uh, the language of one, the other could appreciate and translate and she could be uh, the facilitator between the two to ensure that the right solutions are got. And uh, uh, she enjoyed the job, she said, though she was, went to the training and uh, she started training people and because fortunate, the mistakes are pardoned in those countries, whereas the mistakes are counted against you. Uh, somehow, somehow it is a myth in this country, even the job that you can't be sacked from, uh, people are really afraid to talk it out because the mindset of the bosses are totally different in this country. The systems do not rule, as she rightly said, the individuals rule the roost in this country. She said that she has never bluffed in an interview and she went to the SAP when she went to uh, Cooper Standard and she did an excellent job. And finally, she was happy to be back to the Oracle financial system and she felt at home. And uh, she says she came back and learned a lot of project systems it's great. She has been a versatile personality uh, with respect to the profession. Of course, at the end of the, the whole thing in 2018, our uh, parental values and the responsibility she felt to take care of her father, about which we have learned uh, from her earlier, made her come over here. And uh, she has found the uh, Changing the country and changing the job and career is not a difficulty. Her difficulty had been more to dispose of her house in US was a challenge to her. That was interesting. Then we went to a very systematic uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, 
you rightly said madam in western countries things are look either black or white here in the oriental culture and to a greater extent to the indian culture the world is one side is black one side is uh, white that is only maybe 3 to 5% on either end rest of it is various shades of gray you know uh, even in japan you never get a direct answer from those people whatever they say you need to interpret with respect to circumstances a japanese says uh, maybe we will try that means it will not be done you know uh, that is the way there are many ways of telling between yes and no there are 47 nuances in japanese language as i read in one of the books to convey between the yes and no uh, that is something uh, different i don't think that many but we have our own quite a good number and uh, she said match uh, very systematic those books are i agree you need you get bored to go through those steps and you feel it is not necessary you know uh, here we jump from one point to another it is more of a lightning when you find two positive and negative things charges to develop a flash of lightning with the thunder comes that is how we move over here and uh, uh, you said indian music uh, is really very systematic that is what i know you cannot go between the ragas or shruti i am not a exponent in music but all the same maybe i need to check out the point what you said because as a person who appreciate music i would like to know more about that and i understand everything is relative in this country it is just like the chinese have their own guanxi you know you cannot get an interview with the chinese guy unless you are well connected here also you need to be well connected and uh, subu mentioned the local terminology for that you should have the right jugad uh, when you have the jugad only things to work that is why in this country is not a country where the manufacturer and consumer are not there definitely defined but there are various series of channels a lot of make people make much more money than the manufacturer because of our system of relations system of the commerce that got developed which is not actually one day we would be there i am sure you just said the us culture is precise and absolute yes they are very rough and tough you know for example somebody wants to borrow my camera which is an expensive one and i know that he is a clumsy guy he is sure to spoil it and return to me an american would say i won't give it to you because i don't have trust in you whereas he never say that oh why didn't you ask me four five days before i promised to someone there is a small mistake which needs to be corrected i myself is going to use it today we give many excuses because we don't want to hurt people that is part of the culture i don't think many decades will take it out because that is how we have been brought up and we have been bringing up our children as well and uh, asking questions one feel very question the way in which you do nodding of the head no foreigner will understand whether you say yes or no because we guide it our head they don't know whether we are saying yes or no and that's what many people have expressed it and uh, that's our lifestyle uh, they are well structured life over there and uh, some people who lived in us get bored with that type of structuring you know you every city in our country is a different uh, architecture different style whereas except for a few cities like louisiana boston all other cities look alike you know you need not learn much you know about one city you practically know about every other cities and that is the way they enjoy life and uh, they find the the american comedy 
which is a part of culture, we find it difficult because uh, those comedies who have no new nuances, whereas we are more comes because it has got nuances and there is a concurrent uh, message that is being given and that makes the joke much more interesting to Indian culture. Anyway, and uh, if you talk the way many of us talk in India, you will certainly make enemies or the Americans will get disgusted with you because you are not a direct communicator. Uh, you are giving in, you know, puzzles and uh, to talk like that, uh, they don't like it. And uh, there are a lot of values. For example, a single Korean, one Korean guy and an Indian guy, Indian guy just accepted every, everything I'll take care. Korean guy asked him 25 questions and the boss said, the Korean will do a thorough job in my absence whereas the Indian will mess it up because we don't ask questions. Uh, you know, we think we should be knowing the thing. I think there are changes that are coming about for the better. And uh, dishonesty, uh, yes, it is there. And uh, I know uh, having worked with many people, they might try to show off that they have total belief in you because at the same time, they don't believe in our honesty. There are a lot of people who act as agents for the American companies and Western companies. They are very good people till the time they get commission. When there is a problem, they are wounded. When they need to spend money, they are nowhere. These things, they do not like. And I know many companies which snapped off relations with Indian business because they don't know how to manage our guys. And uh, uh, for example, even truth and lie, we want to talk in a grey way. Suppose if you're driving in a car and you are sitting adjacent to the driver in one of the stop and go signal in US, whether there is any traffic or not, you should stop and go. Whereas here with nobody is there, we just go. That is a part of our culture. And this guy hit a old man and this is the only guy who was sitting beside him as a witness. Now. The man will not say whether he hit him. He will never give an answer. He will evaluate whether the third person has been given the proper medical assistance, whether giving and getting him caught into the problem, whether it serves any useful purpose for the person, whether what has been achieved has been achieved. He will evaluate so many things and go and tell in the police, at that point, I was dosing off, I really did not know which an American would never do. This is all part and parcel of the culture. Colleagues, yes, they don't invite you for social things, whereas we are very friendly and people don't respect our friendliness, we get disappointed. Yeah, there are benefits in going there. Uh, quality of life is good. Our income level is good. But if you have been brought up in a particular culture, uh, certainly, you long for that and many people come back getting to get that type of life what they lived when they were children or school going student but when they find it to be absent they go back and some people prefer to stay over there and which system is successful time will tell certainly the u.s culture has got much more easy way to follow and work compared to our complex system which is most oriental. But we really, really enjoyed your talk when you shared your personal experiences. And uh, we really appreciate your time for collated the things. We know many times we do not know that this much is the strength we have while presenting the thing. We wish you give more talks to us and you know enlighten us. Thanks a lot, madam, for your time. Wish you all the best. Bye. Thank you, Subramanian, sir, for your wonderful summarization and word of thanks as always. There's a, there's a feedback from Mr. M.S. Satyanarayan and from Kolkata. He says, it was very nice. It was interesting to get an insight into the lifestyle in U.S. vis-a-vis India. There's another feedback that is coming from 
with us friend Sudhata. She says, good show, Subhu. I have a friend at home and have to make brunch. Therefore, left after Gita's talk. She could not stay back to give her news. So that's very nice. And uh, thank you, Gita, for your valuable time. Thank you, Min Luchini, for your, for your prayer. The IPL finals is yet to start in about an hour's time. Two great teams, Gujarat and Kenya, have gone to talk once. My mom that's is the... waiting. Sorry? My mom is waiting. Ah, yeah. Let's, it's, it's going to be an interesting game, a nerve yeah. game. A team that holds up the love will, will win the game. And the Kujata is holding, are, are the title holders, so they'll be able to hold back the title. Or Chennai Super King, where Dhoni playing for his final official yeah. cricket, yeah. will walk out and have a swan song. Time will tell us. We'll all watch it. And the recording of this show will be uploaded to YouTube sometime tomorrow. Finally, we'll have a link share for Nango. And let's wrap up all of us over here. Until we meet next, as wishing you all. Goodbye, good night, and Shabrathre. Thank you.